What do you think the first sign of a vitamin A deficiency would manifest as in your body? Now, if you guessed nyctalopia, you are correct. Now, what is this nyctalopia? I mean, it's kind of funny sometimes when people give you these words that you might not understand. Um, then you tell them like, what does that mean? They might slow it down like nyctalopia. I'm like, that doesn't help me. I need to know what the heck it means. So you have to get a dictionary out and look up the word. But nyctalopia basically is night blindness. Okay, you can't see in the dark too well. So whether you're driving home um, in the dark and you're having a hard time seeing the road or it's raining out and it's dark and you really can't see the road or even if you're in your house, your office reading a book and there's not good lighting, okay, you may think you need glasses when in fact you might need vitamin A. Now, I will say that if you spend any amount of time reading your phone, looking at your computer screen like I do, many, many hours a day, what's going to happen is the muscles in the eye go into a spasm, okay, and they stay in this little spasm, which then will affect your ability to see. Then you go to the eye doctor and you'll be fitted for something like this, which is interesting because I, when I went there, I asked the uh, ophthalmologist, I said, um, why do we need glasses? Um, is it a genetic problem? And he goes, yeah, it's a genetic problem. I said, that doesn't make sense to me. And then I asked him, I said, looking at a computer screen or reading a book for long periods of time, doesn't that affect the vision? He says, well, I can't disagree with you. Yeah, that probably does. But honestly, these eye doctors probably are not taught a lot of preventative type things to prevent um, you from developing this spasm in your eye. What I would highly recommend, and I put this in a video, is to get outside every single day to try to counter this spasm going on in the eye by looking in the distance, looking at trees, looking at things, and focusing in on purpose, various things in your environment for at least an hour a day. That would be very therapeutic. And the chances of you needing glasses would be greatly lessened. In fact, if you have glasses, you'll probably improve your eyes over time if you did that. But if you have difficulty seeing in dim lighting or at night while you're driving, suspect a vitamin A deficiency. Now, there's some interesting things about vitamin A, okay? The active form of vitamin A is called retinol, okay? So why did they come up with this name retinol for vitamin A? Could it be that it has something to do with the retina, which is the back part of the eye? It's an extension of your brain that allows you to see. So vitamin A, retinol, the active form, not beta carotene, which is the precursor that has to convert into retinol, Retinol is needed to help you create this little protein in your eye that converts light to electrical signals, and that's called visual purple or rhodopsin. So vitamin A is needed to form this pigment for these little things in your eyes that are called rods, okay? And these little rods help you see in the peripheral area of your vision, as well as low illuminated areas, right? Now, I want to touch on this precursor, beta carotene, um, that converts into retinol. It amazes me that they actually, I think they changed the definition, I don't know how long ago, that beta carotene, the precursor, is vitamin A. Well, it's not the active form of vitamin A. It's the precursor, and it has to be converted into retinol. Let's just kind of compare um, the amount of retinol that's in three ounces of beef liver because beef liver is very, very high in retinol, okay? Three ounces. How much beta carotene in carrots would you need to have the same retinol, okay? As in three ounces of beef liver, you would need 40 pounds of raw carrots. That would be very difficult to consume. I mean, I can see like 20 pounds, but 40 pounds of carrots, it's not gonna happen. All right, how much kale would you need to equal the amount of retinol in just three ounces of beef liver? Well, you need 454 cups of raw kale to equal the retinol in only three ounces of beef liver. Incredible. It's probably not going to happen. So if you're doing three or four or five cups of kale in your salad, whatever, and you think you're getting enough true vitamin A, chances are you're not.
What type of foods are high in vitamin A? Of course, grass-fed beef liver, okay? Egg yolks, cod liver oil. Now, fish oil has the omega-3 fatty acids, but not the vitamin A like cod liver. Cod liver oil has omega-3 fatty acids as well as vitamin D and vitamin A. Raw cheese has a good amount of vitamin A. Raw cream and raw butter has a good amount of retinol. But pasteurization destroys vitamin A. So if you're getting pasteurized milk or pasteurized cheese, which is the majority of cheese, or pasteurized butter, or even if you're eating a lot of overly cooked uh, carrots or cooked vegetables that has the precursor, you're not going to get a lot of vitamin A. Now, if you're doing cheese, try to get raw milk cheese. If you can get sheep cheese, you'll get a lot more vitamin A. In fact, there's another animal milk that you can get to get a good amount of vitamin A, and that is actually rat milk. So if you run out of sheep cheese milk, you always have a plan B. So vitamin A is needed to prevent night blindness, okay, to be able to see in the dark somewhat. It's also needed to prevent dry eyes. It's also needed to help the eye compensate. So this is probably why if someone's very, very deficient in vitamin A, they're going to have a hard time um, focusing in on different things because another symptom of vitamin A deficiency is dry eyes, but also dry skin. Vitamin A is also necessary for um, any type of skin differentiation. So if you don't have enough vitamin A, your skin might not turn into a nice soft skin. It might be rough, scaly, dry skin. It's also needed to help the eye compensate for distances as well. So some of the accommodation reflex uh, is dependent on a certain amount of vitamin A. Vitamin A is desperately needed to prevent infections because it's very important for your immune system. And I'm not just talking about the external skin. I'm talking about also problems with the internal skin, like the mucous membranes of your sinuses, like the internal skin of the esophagus, of the stomach, of the intestines can all be affected by a vitamin A deficiency. And as a child is developing early on, um, that child needs a good amount of vitamin A. So this relates to why certain people are deficient, right? Um, a woman who's pregnant, right, uh, is more susceptible to having a vitamin A deficiency because of the demand for vitamin A goes up. Also, if she's breastfeeding, she needs more vitamin A. This is probably why uh, your grandmother or your parents recommended a spoonful of cod liver oil on a regular basis. Mm -mm -mm, that delicious cod liver oil. So other reasons why people are deficient is having this false idea that beta carotene is retinol. It's not. Beta carotene has to be converted into retinol to be active. And that leads to another reason why a person might be deficient in vitamin A. Well, there's something called polymorphism. That is a genetic mutation that can affect certain things in your body. But apparently the gene that converts beta carotene into retinol could be a polymorphic gene. It could be mutated. In fact, there's a study I read that shows that it's, it's pretty common to have a problem with that gene that converts beta carotene into retinol. So that could be another reason why someone is deficient in retinol because they might be consuming a lot of beta carotene. It's not converting, or they might be consuming in the active form of vitamin A, yet they have this genetic weakness. And by the way, if that's the problem, I would recommend not just increasing the amount of retinol foods, okay? I would also add bile salts and maybe another type of bile salt called Tupka to increase uh, more absorption. And of course, that's a perfect segue to another reason why people are deficient in vitamin A. They don't have enough bile. They have bile problems. Let's say they have gallstones or they had gallstones or they have their gallbladder removed or they have sludge in the gallbladder or they have a fatty liver or some other problem with the liver that makes bile. There's a lot of reasons why you might not have enough bile. It also could be you took an antibiotic. The microbes in your gut actually make a certain type of bile as well. So that could be another reason. Let's say, for example, you are on a low-fat diet. Of course, if you're on a low-fat diet, you're not going to be eating the foods high in retinol. Let's say you're on a medication called statin that blocks your ability to turn cholesterol into bile. 
you end up with a bile deficiency. So taking statins can actually give you a vitamin A deficiency as well. And the last point on why you might be deficient is just uh, some knowledge on vitamin A gets destroyed with heat. So if milk is pasteurized, if someone consumes milk and it's not raw and just pasteurized, they're not going to get a vitamin A. Or let's say uh, they're consuming a lot of carrots or kale that's overly cooked. Okay, well, that just destroys the precursor. So it's not going to turn into retinol. Or again, you're not consuming raw cheese. You're just doing the regular pasteurized cheese. Another problem. All right, so now you definitely know more about vitamin A, okay? I think the next best video for you to watch would be the one on cod liver oil. So check that out. I put it up right here.